why do I wake up in the morning for this? So, the nominations for the 88th Annual Academy Awards were announced earlier this morning. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen the nominees already. You probably watched the live announcement. I'm just going to go over some of the things that we didn't expect to happen. Number one, no Amy Adams. What the f***? Now, there are some people who entertain the possibility that Amy Adams would not get in for her performance in Arrival. As much as I didn't want to admit it, I knew there was a chance that this would happen. Of course, it's incredibly strange that a movie that gets in for Best Picture, Best Director, and gets in for a lot of technical awards across the board, does not get in for its lead performance, which is what makes the movie work. However, it is a sci-fi movie, and Amy Adams is very subdued in the movie. Perhaps just as surprising as Amy Adams missing out is Ruth Nega getting in for Loving. She was nominated at the Golden Globes, but most people thought her chances had stalled there. She wasn't nominated at BAFTA, and she was not nominated at SAG. Those groups opted to nominate Emily Blunt for The Girl on the Train, which is a surprise in itself. As miffed as I am about Amy Adams not getting in, and as much as I didn't personally respond to Ruth Nega's performance in Loving, she's an obvious breakout star, the camera loves her, there's obvious talent there. So, congrats to her. Why did y'all not nominate Taraji P. Henson? This makes no sense. I can't say I would have picked her over Adams, but I would have certainly picked her over Nega or Streep. Hidden Figure score nominations for Picture, Adapted Screenplay, and Supporting Actress. So it's odd to see Henson miss out when several of the performances in the category were in films that didn't have support all across the board. Well, there's always hoping for Amy Adams' Janis Joplin biopic if it ever gets made. The next big surprise, no Deadpool anywhere. I can't say I'm upset about this, like, at all. People thought this would walk away with the Makeup and Hairstyling Award, but it didn't even get nominated there and it was shut out across the board. I did not respond to Deadpool. I understand why some people did, and I understand that this is not a movie that is bad per se, but it is the type of movie that does not work for me at all. On the surface, Deadpool missing here is not particularly shocking. After all, it's a snarky superhero movie that was released in the first quarter of the qualifying year. However, the film was nominated for the Producers Guild of America Award, a Writers Guild of America Award, and got into the Golden Globes for Best Picture and Actor in a Motion Picture Comedy or Musical. In fact, I was putting together a video that never got uploaded, oops, that looked at the Producers Guild of America and Writers Guild of America nominations, and if my research is correct, no film has gotten in for both of those awards and not gotten in for anything at the Oscars at all. So that's something. Of course, we don't have to say Oscar-nominated Deadpool, which for me is awesome. Of course, they did nominate Suicide Squad, so... Next up, La La Land in sound editing. Now, I won't pretend to be an expert in the realms of sound editing or sound mixing. I mean, you're watching my videos, right? But sound editing tends to go for films that have a lot of action sequences, films that have a lot in that regard. And La La Land... The general argument against this nomination happening was that there's not a whole lot of sound editing to begin with. But the sound editors must have seen something in this one because it got in for the category, as well as every other technical award it was eligible for. The nomination for sound editing is itself a little bit surprising, but as a result, La La Land is nominated for 14 awards, making it tied with Titanic and All About Eve as the most nominated film in Academy Awards history. It's won more Golden Globes than any other film in history. It's tied for the most Oscar nominations. But guys, I don't think it's winning Best Picture. Number four, Mel Gibson for Best Director. I mean... They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get it. Can we not? This is a nomination I didn't want to predict, but I just kind of knew it was going to happen. This is the kind of film that appeals to what Ann Thompson refers to as the steak eaters of the Academy. And films like that are in short supply this year. At least in terms of being big Oscar contenders. I mean, Damien Chazelle, Barry Jenkins, and Denis Villeneuve got in. So I guess we have to take Mel Gibson as like a payoff. Some people really like it, some people like me think it's pretty terrible. But again, I see why it got nominated. It, has, it feels like something that Mel Gibson would have directed in the 90s. To some people that sounds like a compliment, to some people that sounds like an insult, but it's what appealed to the director's branch apparently. Number five. Aaron Taylor Johnson not getting in for Best Supporting Actor. Now, it is true that Aaron Taylor Johnson came into this at the very last minute. 
He won the Golden Globe just a few days before the nomination's voting was closed, and before that he was not really perceived as a threat for the nomination. However, Nocturnal Animals itself is a very divisive movie. Taylor Johnson himself is very divisive as an actor. But it is a fascinating omission. New Performance has won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor, got a corresponding BAFTA nomination, and missed out at the Oscars. There is precedent for somebody winning the Supporting Actor Golden Globe and getting a BAFTA nomination and missing out at the Oscars, but at that point BAFTA, I believe, did not have a Supporting Actor category. I believe it was the Best Foreign Actor category. Either way, it was not a direct correlation to Supporting Actor. So, Aaron Taylor Johnson sets a precedent as the first Golden Globe winner and BAFTA nominee in this particular category to not get in at the Oscars. Instead, they opted for Michael Shannon. Of course, he missed the nomination for 99 Homes. He has been recognized before. The Academy clearly likes him. Number six, no Hugh Grant for Best Supporting Actor. This one admittedly stings a little bit. He was nominated at BAFTA, the Golden Globes, in the lead category, and the Screen Actors Guild Awards. But apparently there was not enough love for his performance to snag the nomination here. I guess the Academy really doesn't like him. I mean, he was the lead of a surprise Best Picture nominee back in the 90s, and he didn't get a nomination for that. So... So, what did you think of this morning's mess? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at 202Chicago. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!